Chapter 13, we're going to be talking about the one-way repeated measure and analysis of variance, or ANOVA for short. Um, so chapter 13 is very similar to chapter 12. You'll notice that the major difference between this chapter and the last chapter is that we're just dealing with a different type of research design. So chapter 12 dealt with the one-way independent samples, ANOVA, and this one is dealing with uh, one-way repeated measures, or sometimes called within subjects, ANOVA. So let's talk about some of the background related to this type of analysis. So um, as I mentioned in the last slide, in this chapter, we're gonna extend the ANOVA, the analysis of variance, to research designs that are involving repeated measures or within subjects. Um, so that looks like those research designs that have the same people in every single treatment condition. So the same person is doing your study multiple times essentially, or the same person is being measured in each of your treatment conditions. So also another way that we refer to this type of ANOVA, as I mentioned in the last slide, um, sometimes it's called repeated measures ANOVA, sometimes it's called within subjects ANOVA. Just know that those two different ways of referring to it are just referring to the exact same type of analysis. So there's no difference between a repeated measures or within subjects ANOVA. It's, it's referring to the same type of analysis. So for whatever reason, they're just are two different names for the same thing. So when to use this type of hypothesis test or when to use this type of analysis. So we will use a one way within subjects or repeated measures ANOVA when we are comparing the effects of one nominal or ordinal factor. So remember in the last chapter we learned about this term factor and a factor is just either an independent variable, a true independent variable that you as a researcher have manipulated, or it could also be a quasi-independent variable. So a quasi-independent variable might be groups that already exist, um, but you as a researcher did not manipulate them. Um, so either way, those two types of independent variables are handled the same way in the analysis. So the major difference between um, the t-test, so in chapter, I believe it was 11, we learned about the uh, related samples t-test, um, which is quite similar to this analysis as well, except in this analysis, we can actually have two or more levels. So remember that our t-test, it was only limited to two different groups that we could compare, or two different conditions, or two different time points. So we can actually do either a repeated measures ANOVA or a related samples t-test if we were just comparing two groups. Either of those analyses would work. Um, the major advantage to the ANOVA is that we can compare more than two groups. So two or more um, groups or levels can be compared, whereas the t-test was just limited to comparing two. Also, an important thing to notice in this chapter that differs from the last chapter, chapter 12, is that now we're using uh, the research design, the within subjects re research design. Again, that would involve, we have one group of people that's doing our study multiple times. So each um, person does each level of your independent variable. So I'll show you an example that might help clarify that if that's not already clear to you in a little bit. Um, and then we're comparing these three or two or more, I guess, two or more levels. We're comparing those on an interval or ratio DV. So again, whatever your de dependent variable is, it's just measured on a scale that is numbers or a numerical scale. So let's talk a little bit more about um, some of the background of the repeated measures ANOVA and kind of how it's similar yet slightly different than the last chapter in chapter 12 that we talked about. So a lot of the um, actual logic behind the analysis and the calculations in this chapter are almost identical 
to the previous chapter in chapter 12. The major difference that exists between this chapter and the last chapter, chapter 12, is that in chapter 12, we had different people in each of the levels that were being compared. So, you know, if we had, if we were testing a, um, a drug versus a placebo, in the last chapter, we would have completely different people in each of those two groups. So people would either be assigned to consume the actual drug we were testing, or people would be assigned to consume the placebo. So that's different from this chapter, where in this chapter we have that within subjects design, which involves having the same people in each of our levels. So using that same example, this chapter, the research design would look something like if we we're comparing a drug to a placebo, we would have our participants take the actual drug and then we'd measure the effectiveness. And then those same people at a later time would take the placebo and then we measure its effectiveness. So again, we have the same people in each of those different conditions that we're comparing. So as um, to recap what I just said, um, in this repeated measures ANOVA, we have um, the same people that are tested in every treatment condition, which is also known as levels. So every person is in every level. And what this allows us to do in this type of analysis is we actually can measure individual differences and then eliminate those individual differences from the analysis. So uh, just as a reminder, individual differences are those ways in which people differ from each other that aren't relevant to the study. So if we were, um, if we were looking at levels of happiness, um, you know, different people have different life experiences that led them to be more or less happy, right? So we can't necessarily explain why that is, um, but we know that people are just different on their levels of happiness when they're coming into the study to begin with. So in this type of analysis, we actually can measure those individual differences since it's the same people in every single treatment condition. We can measure the extent to which uh, we're looking at individual differences versus the changes based on our treatment. And we can actually eliminate to some extent the effects of the individual differences or how people are differing from each other at the beginning. And so what that ends up looking like is it changes the actual theoretical structure for our F ratio. So again, the F ratio is the test statistic used in ANOVA. And so it's just going to change our F ratio a little bit. So it has this slightly different theoretical structure in this chapter. So if you remember from the last chapter, we talked about this theoretical structure for our F ratio where our F ratio that's used in ANOVA, on the top of the ratio is our, our between groups um, differences. And our between groups differences are composed of those differences that are actually due to whatever we manipulated or whatever the treatment was. So let's say, you know, the differences between the drug versus placebo, that would be a treatment effect. But there are also chance differences that we really can't explain. Those could be due to experimental error. Those could be due to individual differences. There are lots of differences that exist in our measurements that we just can't explain that are due to sampling error or experimental error. And so at the bottom of our F ratio, we have a measure of how much of those chance differences we should expect to obtain. So again, um, the chance differences on the bottom is basically what we're expecting, the amount of differences we're expecting just due to chance. So again, that would be those differences due to individual differences or experimental error. <clears throat> so as I mentioned in the last slide, we actually are able to identify and measure the degree to which we're um, seeing individual differences.
in this type of research design. And as a result, we can take those effects of individual differences out of our F ratio. And so what that leaves us with on the bottom of our F ratio is, again, we're still gonna be looking at the variance between groups on top, although the, um, the individual differences have been removed from that part of the equation, as well as you'll see down here, this has changed a little bit in that we no longer are just saying chance differences. These are just differences due to, to experimental error, which doesn't necessarily mean the experimenter did anything wrong. Just um, anytime we're measuring things, there are just things that happen that can result in error. So the denominator in our F ratio is now going to be referred to error variance or the MS error. It's just a measure of how much error, like experimental error, that we should expect in our study. So again, the major thing to take from this is that before we used to have individual differences included in both of these chance differences in our F ratio. In this chapter, essentially any of those differences due to individual differences are taken out of both parts of the equation. And so it leaves us with this new ratio of the between group differences versus error.